Talking about hope. We're looking at the message, the gateway to an undefeatable life. That means then, as you come to the Lord, you're thinking about one thing, life. And what kind of life? Spiritual life, the higher life. The kind of life that pleases the Lord. That people like Enoch and people like Noah and people like Moses and people like Joshua and those people like David and people like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel and people like Malachi, like Peter, like Paul. The lives they lived and they lived, they, they left a mark in this world. And now we can follow through that life and legacy that these people came to this world and they made a mark. And so you want to think about that kind of life. What kind of life? The undefeatable life, the invincible life, the unconquerable life. You see, there are people that barely live and they're almost dead. They're still breathing, but as you look at the kind of lives they live, it's a life of complaints and a life of you know, self-pity, a life of, what am I doing here? What have I got here? Why is the Lord brought me here? But we're talking about a kind of life that is undefeatable. When Satan comes at you, demons come at you, and the sin of this world is through, all they want to throw at you, the darts of the things of the world, that you keep standing and having done all to stand, a kind of life that says we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ that loved us and gave himself for us. The undefeatable life that you are not defeated by, you know, the little, little things that come and the little kind of the frowns of the world and the intimidation of the world and the tempters and the temptresses of the world. You are able to stand, you are saying, no matter what and no matter where, I have that kind of life undefeatable. And then it says, there's a gateway that leads to that. And if you never go through that gateway, you might desire, and you might even have a great ambition and purpose of mind. This is what I want, a life that is spiritual, a life that is supernatural, a life that's undefeatable, and yet you don't know the way to get there. You'll be like somebody groping in the dark. And then you say, but I wanted to have it, but I couldn't have it. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 15. The labor of the foolish wearies every one of them, because he knoweth not how to go to the city. The labor of the foolish wearies every one of them. You know, sometimes you've seen them. A particular, it might be a fly, an insect. An insect does not know that there is a glass window. And the, the insect just knows that where I'm going is outside there. An insect cannot tell that that window, which is a glass window, is a hindrance. So it flies with all the strength and hits at that window. But, you know, the, the insect is so small and his brain is so small and it keeps on hitting at that glass window until it's tired and drops dead. And many people are like that, you know. They know that they want to have a life out there, undefeatable, unconquerable, invincible, a kind of life that is spiritual and supernatural. But they keep on knocking and hitting at the glass window, and they do not understand, if you did that before, you couldn't get through. You did that again, you couldn't get through. Why don't you just relax and look around? Is there another outlet, a gateway by which you can go, and then you'll be 
able to get through. And that's the reason why you want to be wise. You don't want to be like that foolish ant or foolish fly that is just knocking at the glass window and you've not got what you are thinking to get. Isn't that why some people gamble all the money they have? They put it into, you know, lottery or whatever. And they say, I think I'm going to hit the jackpot. And then they lose all the money. Then they go walk again and get some money. And they still, they cannot learn. And they put it there again. And they keep on until their lives become so miserable. And what they dreamt of earlier in life. And they put everything they've got into it. And you come to your 30s and the 40s or 70s and 80s. And you look back, you said, I've been hitting the glass window all my life. I've put all my strength, all my resources into this, thinking it will yield something. And it never yielded anything. Before you are 80, why don't you just stop and think today? If uh, the glass window you have been knocking at did not give you an outlet and you couldn't get through to the place you ought to go, why don't you then think and say, hey, I have to stop. I'll not be like the foolish who wearies himself and then does not know how to go into the city. I want to get to that city. And you'll get there in Jesus' name. So we're going to look at the gateway. We're going to look at the good way. We're going to look at the glorious way. We're going to look at this way that leads to the place we want to be, the undefeatable life. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, we're looking at it from verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ that knows about this kind of life, abundant life, spiritual life, supernatural life, a life that is heavenly, glorious life, the undefeatable life. And he says, here is how to get there, that you enter at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And how many times uh, some people, church goers, have read that? How many times some people that have, you know, some of you who are here, especially those of you who are young in your teens or your early 20s or maybe early 30s, you open your eyes when you are born, you find yourself in church. And you've heard most of the time many preachers preaching, telling us the words of Jesus Christ. There is a wide gate and there is a broad way that leads to destruction. You've heard it over and over for more than a decade and more than two decades and you're still thinking that that broad way will lead you somewhere. It's not going to lead you anywhere that has life, undefeatable life. It's going to lead to destruction and the earlier you wake up and then buckle up and pinch yourself and say, hey, what am I doing? I've done this now for a decade or two decades or three decades or five decades and I've not made it. Why don't I get wise and turn around and take another way? And you'll take that way. Then it says over there, it says, Many there be that go in their heart. And that's something that gives me a warning. I should not follow the majority. The majority are wrong. The majority. Many there be that go in their heart. In verse 14, because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. And do you know what some people consider in joining a church? They consider the multitude. And you see that church there, the minister is on TV, and the minister has a kind of national recognition. And you say, if I want to join a church, I think that's the church I'm going to join. Because many, many people are there. But you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, in fact, just for that multitude. It has a first indication. You ought to sit back and say, am I sure I want to join that place? Other people will look at a church, a church like this, and you see just few people. I mean, I'm talking about in you know, a regular church service, we appear many because we are coming from all over the nation, and this is good. I said this is good. At least one, once a year and once in a while that we all come together and then we have this crowd. But when you come to the regular church and the local church and then you enter in and you say, I can count these uh, people, one, two, three, four, until when you count 35, you say, looks like these are not many. I don't think I want to come again. I think you want to come again because few there be, few there be, few there be that find it. 
and it is that way that gateway the lord is leading us through and he's saying this is where to stay and this is where to find your place unto glory land you'll find it in jesus name we're looking at uh, luke chapter luke chapter 13 luke chapter 13 to know that these are the very words of jesus christ and this is what the lord is telling us and he's saying you need to make a good choice a better choice a wise choice it tells us in luke chapter 13 verse 24 strive to enter in strive to enter in. strive to enter in and before I go on, you see, when you read the Word of God, you need to think about it. And some people, they don't understand striving to enter into the gate. They come to church and they say, you know what? When I come to church, I like people to comfort me and to pet me and to talk nice to me. And there's a lot of struggle in the world. You have to struggle in education. You have to struggle getting a job. You need to struggle making the job a stay. You need to struggle being able to manage your finances. You need to struggle to make the economy work for you. And when I come to church, I hope somebody will tell the pastors over there that we have struggled from Monday till Saturday day when i come on sunday i want somebody to you know just pet me and talk nice to me and talk good to me because you know a lot of struggling that it's in the church i have comfort but you know what jesus said jesus said when you come to church we need to emphasize something to your strive You'll endeavor. You'll do something. You'll get out of yourself. If there is any place you need to discipline yourself, if there's any place you need to screw yourself up, if there's any place you need to say, hey, I need to bring every, every resource I've got and all the talents I've got, all the abilities I've got, and get into this way, it's in the church. You might even relax when you get into the world because, you know, after all, all the struggles we're making in the world, getting money and getting name and getting car and getting property, all that will vanish away eventually. But the one thing that will last is this life eternal, life enduring, life undefeatable. And Jesus Christ said, strive. Give me that word. Say that again. Strive. You know, there are people that they make the kingdom of God so cheap and they tell us it's all of grace. I had that before and it's not just that in this time. And sometimes, you know, when you read some of these people, they're very soft and everything looks nice and it's all of grace, all of grace. And it, there is no striving at all. There's no trying at all. There's no resisting of temptation. Everything is just made for you. And Christ did everything on the cross of Calvary. That same Christ were referring to he himself said, strive. If it were not necessary, how would he tell us to do that? But you know, temptation comes and no striving, no endeavor, no trial, uh, no resistance against that temptation. You just do what comes your way. That's not the way that leads to life undefeatable. It says, try. Look at brothers and sisters, this is a nation that puts so much value on sports. And when I look at those people and I see them, they strive. Do they? Oh, and they do everything, everything they can do just to qualify to go to the Olympics. And they strive and strive. They discipline themselves. They moderate their diet. They moderate their, you know, posture. And they do all these exercises and the jogging and everything. Even those who are not in athletics in this country. Think about the industry of just keeping fit and going to the gym almost every day. And any time you miss that, it's like you're feeling guilty. You're almost thinking you're missing heaven because you miss the gym. But the people over here, they strive for this just to keep the body in good shape. But then to keep your spirit in good shape. And to keep your mind in good shape, and then to get to this life that is undefeatable, we do nothing about that at all. I think the average church member in this land, in this nation, gives more to dieting and gives more attention and more thought and more activity and more striving to keeping the body fit than keeping their souls and spirit fit. Won't you agree with that? 
That's what people do. And then we forget the words of Jesus Christ that said, if you want to live this undefeatable life, here is one thing to do. Strive to enter in. Because it says, for many I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. I will enter in. Look at Revelation. Now we're looking at Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 12. Revelation chapter 22 verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me. To give to every man, to give every man, according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Listen to this. Blessed are they that, what? Tell me out loud. Uh, brothers and sisters, if you read only commentaries and you don't read the Bible, it's like you're listening to the commentator on sports and you, are, you never see the athletes they're commenting about. And all you think of is, is commentary on the athlete. And the athlete that they're commenting about, you never, never see them. Many people, they read only commentaries and they read only what they call Christian books, and they do not read the Bible. And they'll say, I read this author, I read this author, I read this author, I about the Bible itself. You know what those authors say? The authors say, what you do does not matter. Christ has done everything. And when you read that over and over, you think that is true. But here it says, in this verse 14, look at it again. Blessed are they that, tell me out loud, do his commandments. And some people even tell us that it doesn't even really matter. Whether you sin or you don't sin, whatever you do, it doesn't really matter. Christ has done everything. In fact, they even go beyond that. They said, you were saved before the foundation of the world. You were already born again before you repented. And because Christ, before Christ even died on the cross of Calvary, before the foundation of the world, you had been saved. And so now that you know you, you now came to the, even if you didn't come, you had been saved. And now that you came, whatever you do doesn't matter. What you, what you need to understand is that Christ has done everything. My Bible doesn't say that. And Jesus didn't say that. And none of the apostles said that. And none of the prophets said that. Here Jesus Christ himself, he is the one talking. You know, in verse, in verse 12, is the one that said, I come quickly. In verse 13, he is the one that said, I'm Alpha and Omega. And then in verse 14, is the one that continued and said, Blessed are they that do. His commandments that they may have right to the tree of life. And that they may enter in through where? Through the gate. Through the gate. We're talking about the gate. The gateway that leads us to that undefeatable life. That they may enter in through the gate into the city. As we talk about the gateway. And we're looking at the undefeatable life. What are we going to say? What was just saying? We're dividing the message to three points. Number one. The gateway of saving grace. The gateway of saving grace. Number two, the good way of sustained godliness. Not convention weak, uh, godliness, and it's not a weak godliness. It's not a temporary.